A quick disclaimer. I've played the original game multiple times over and over, but I'm without any way of recording it now. Eventually, I will most likely compare the original to this updated version, but as of now, I'm without the time. Thank you. When I grew up, animation was my jam. Finding Nemo, The Incredibles, My Neighbor Totoro, The Nightmare Before Christmas, Lilo and Stitch, Treasure Planet, Ice Age, Shrek, Shrek 2, Shrek 3, all were frequent flyers when it came to my DVD player. When it came to TV, all I had was PBS Kids, but we were dealing with goddamn Sesame Street, Dragon Tales, Cyber Chase, Arthur, Word Girl, The Rough Rufferman Shows, Martha Speaks, Supervised, Sid, The Science Kid, Clifford, The Big Red Dark. I had never had cable, so it was all I had. But guess who did? My cousin. And guess what I watched? Fucking Spongebob. Bitch. And that same uncle who let me Wind Waker let me battle for Bikini Bottom on the GameCube. And, like, 13 years later, I still have it right here. And I've defended it for years and years. I think it's a great platformer, full of collectibles that are as fun as hell to find, catchy tunes, creative ideas, funny writing, a solid voice cast. It's a fun little game that definitely deserved a fresh coat of paint. Nostalgia intact, I grabbed this bad boy off Amazon day one and waited impatiently to delve back into my childhood. And delve, I did. Battle for Bikini Bottom gives nine unique worlds to explore and three boss levels which are treated as their own sections. They're all connected via Bikini Bottom acting as the hub, requiring golden spatulas to open new areas. Collecting golden spatulas is done everywhere. You're rewarded one for each section of a level cleared, and then for completing side objectives along the way, like boss fights, bungees, slides, enemy rushes, puzzles, and more. It uses the super successful and enjoyable Super Mario 64 design, but feels more like Odyssey, as you stay within the world after collecting one of the main collectibles, and they're more abundant. You can also collect spatulas by collecting the side collectibles, Patrick socks and shiny objects, the main currency, for Mr. Krabs. It's very collected thon -y. Which, well, is exactly what Battle for Bikini Bottom is a collectathon. Each world is pulled from the show, scattered with references and Heavy Iron's handiwork, filling these worlds full of fun levels and sections. There are lackluster worlds here, like Downtown Bikini Bottom and Kelp Forest being my least favorite, but even those offer moments of joy that will leave you smiling. The main bread and butter of this game is definitely the platforming. In early worlds, the platforming is something a fetus could accomplish even while still in the womb. Falling into water, or goo, or darkness, or any out-of-bounds area is considered a death, so dying is still possible in these first areas, but it's really, really damn quick and easy regardless. The first challenging platforming is in the Mermelayer, an optional sock behind a shiny object pay gate, features conveyor belts and various electricity, and on from there the game can be mildly challenging. The slides on Sand Mountain can be difficult in regards to timing. Kelp Forest demands using Patrick's throw ability for unique platforming opportunities. Rock Bottom and Flying Dutchman's Graveyard both use gimmicks introduced earlier to create harder challenges. And SpongeBob's Dream is the perfect melding of it all, testing your skills that you develop throughout the game. It can be challenging, but just barely. As mentioned with Patrick, there are differences between the three characters. Patrick has a ground pound and the ability to carry slash throw objects. Sandy can use her lasso to take out enemies in a single hit and perform swings to reach faraway places. And SpongeBob has a ground pound and aerial attack with an expanding moveset, the Bubble Bowl and Cruise Bubble. All of these mentioned traits can be utilized for traversing the landscape, solving puzzles, and fighting enemies. And the enemies in this game are all pretty creative for robots in a children's game. There's Fodder, which are literally just one-hit dudes that are easy to kill in the standard enemy type, but also Monsoon, a robot that uses lightning to attack, Sleepy Time, enemies that are sensitive to movement, and they're all pretty basic, yet their designs and intros elevate them above the rest of the enemies in any other licensed video game of the time. And the bosses are good intermediate points, not hard, but good distractors. The robot versions are obviously the highlights here, and the bosses at the end of certain levels really blow, with the exception of Prawn, which I must admit is rad. He's an example of Heavy Iron being creative instead of just using the Dirty Bubble, the Atomic Flounder, or Man Ray. They create their own interesting character, which is how this game works. Creativity. Heavy Iron made a game from the ground up that showed off their love for the show and wanted to make a quality product. But at this point, so many people have done retrospectives that I'd rather just talk about this rehydrated version from here on out. So how did Purple Lamp improve on Heavy Iron's already great game? I've played this game, well, the original, for countless hours as a, I was a child and had no concept of time. I've gone through it multiple times, even 100%ed it a few years back. So I noticed some differences throughout the game, stuff that was pretty annoying. I'm not a fan of these dangerous spaces that show up. It makes Robert... Robert Patrick... 
It makes Robert Patrick from Terminator 2 seem like a joke. There's no fear of getting hit by stuff if, well, you're aware of where to avoid. It's a kid's game, but still, like, come on, this isn't a very challenging game to begin with. I'm also not a fan of how this game approaches boss fights. It tells you what to do straight up, leaving no new challenge. Ah, I'm here with Robo Sandy. I wonder how I'm supposed to beat him. I've learned no new skills before this fight, so I'm assuming I'll have to use my current arsenal and look for a point where I can catch my foe off guard, making my opponent feel pain when they're tired and weak, unexpecting it to say the least. Oh, or I can just follow this text on the screen. Awesome. Loading screens galore are also present. Like, fuck, dude, I have to sit through loading screen every time I die or just get pushed off the map by accident? There wasn't a problem in the original, and when you accidentally fall off, you're penalized by sitting there, waiting 15 seconds to load it all over again. Not even loading screens, really, but another screen I'm not a fan of is the way of showing the worlds on the pause screen. I preferred the old way as I found it super easy to go to each different world, and it didn't spoil the game in terms of what was next. Another huge, HUGE complaint is the larger amount of shiny objects needed to collect the spatulas from Mr. Krabs. I noticed it was a huge jump, saw in a review that they complained about it, and now checking online, apparently the original added 500 shiny objects per spatula, while this game adds 3,000 per. 108,000 shiny objects are required to get all 8 of his spatulas. By the end of the game, after playing through every level and getting all other shiny objects, I didn't have enough. So, I spent an hour grinding in this place in Goo Lagoon, waiting through 15 second loading screens for each attempt. I wanted death. This was a really, really bad change. I have no idea why they decided to change this, but not improve other parts of the game that actually needed a facelift. As of a recent update, this has been changed, but the fact that it was released like this on day one is... Still something to complain about. Also, gameplay stuff to complain about that I realized and thought, now nah, I must be crazy, I just forgot, but you have to hold the button to go across these gaps of sanding these bungees control like absolute shit, fuck this garbage, I already thought bungees were just okay, but this made me hate them. Also, 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 in the original, in Patrick's dream, you could just walk into the abyss of nothingness and it would loop like Patrick was just dreaming about nothingness, to show how he thinks of nothing, just avoided nothing, but here there are barriers, purple and black. And there's this entirely new mode of multiplayer, and this is just borderline insulting. You remember that game, Spongebob Here Pants, that came out, and everyone said, God, this looks like hot fucking garbage, play Battle for Bikini Bottom instead of any of the other games on the Xbox, PS2, GameTube? Well, they basically did the same thing here with less polish. It's a super bare-bones horde mode, two-player experience that features no creativity, unfun gameplay, annoying sound effects, and incredibly dull game design. They didn't even make it into the goddamn cousin. It's just boom, over. Wanna play again? No, thanks. Never again. There are a few positives here, though, but I must admit they're outweighed by the negatives. There are more idle animations for each character. Dialogue between characters features more animations from each side to give it a bit more polish. The robot's eyes are green and then red when attacking. You're able to jump while in SpongeBob perform, and the push buttons are changed to represent whatever move is needed to press them. But that's it. I'm sad to say that I prefer the original. It's got to be a mix of nostalgia along with my complaints on the remaster that causes me to feel this way. I really enjoy the more cruddy looking graphics, they remind me of a time long ago and I'm more used to them. The robots look creepier there too as they didn't look super cartoony with all the polygons not intact. It was what I grew up with and I have to say that the remaster didn't make me want to never touch the original again. It made me want to give it another go in the future if anything. I'm sad to say that while it's cool to be able to play this game with a fresh coat of paint in 2020, I'm not inclined to give away my orig original to replace it. Bro, I synthesized to make a power band.